Boom, what's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. Today I wanna to teach you guys one of my favorite ways to close the cart on anything that I'm selling. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, I'm excited for today's episode and to walk you guys through a little bit how I like to close cart. Now, if you don't know... Closing the cart is one of the most powerful things you can do in any product that you sell. I think one of the biggest reasons why people don't sell as much as they should is that they are always selling their product, right? <laughs> if you just go in and just add in a cart open and cart close that's kind of systematic, very easily, it's, it's very easy to make something that might seem you know, hey, I can get it at any time and make it actually even more valuable than it is um, with a lot more scarcity and urgency. Scarcity and urgency are the weapons, right? It's the, one of the easiest weapons you can pull as a marketer. And one of the easiest ways, again, to create that is by car, uh, closing the cart. So, I don't know, it's probably like two, three weeks ago, we decided to do a rerun of uh, what I call the OfferMind Masterclass. And it's it's merely just a, it's, it's six sessions where I dive through six different steps on how to actually create and launch an offer. And it's a ton of fun, I love doing it. It is exhausting. It's two hours per session and it's six sessions in six days, or three days, okay? So it's two sessions a day and it's a lot. And at the end of it, I told them like, hey, if you guys want this OfferMind Masterclass, class, I'll go ahead and give you guys um, a free ticket to my event. And uh, it's been awesome. Really loved it. But I'm following the principles, right? I'm following the principles about going in and closing the card. And so what we decided to do was I need to go through and create a cart close sequence. Now, a lot of people create a sequence to actually go launch their product, right? And you likely have done this. I, I'll go out and I remember the first webinar I ever put out there. Um, I created all these campaigns to promote it. Go register, go do this, right? And there's all these sequences. And I remember spending tons of time sitting at the computer thinking about what emails I could write that would make a lot of uh, buying or um, registration desire, right? Which is very similar to buying desire. And so anyways, they're like, oh man, I wanna go register. I gotta go see that, I gotta have that. Um, and what was powerful is as I went through and started creating these sequences, I realized like, oh my gosh, I need to have a cart close sequence as well. And it's one of the ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson Perfect Webinar isms to do that. And so I got, I've become more and more obsessed. I, I should say it this way. I've become as obsessed with the cart close sequence as I have the cart open or promotion sequence and um, and how I actually cause a lot of noise of, around the fact that, hey, we're actually gonna take this away. You're not able to buy it in three days or whatever. Now, I remember the very first webinar I went out, I tossed out that was a, a big success, the bur big first success uh, successful webinar I did. Um, it was a it was a it was a fun webinar. It was a cool it was a cool webinar. I really enjoyed doing it, um, and I was playing with different cart closing sequence timelines. Okay, be like three days where like hey, from the time I say here's the offer, you know, three days later, let's go ahead and, and close the cart. And funny enough, that actually felt a little bit long um, for me to say hey, why don't you go? Uh, why don't you go? Why don't you go? Um, uh, why don't you go buy, right? Why don't you watch the replay? Here's another reason why you should go get it. By the way, there's only a few hours left, right? And that's kind of one of the standard sequences you'll see in an info product launch, but you can use it for anything. Um, and then I was like, you know, what if I tested like 24 hours? So I remember a few weeks later, I did a live webinar again, and uh, I gave them 24 hours to make the decision to move forward. <laughs> and that was like, it was too fast. And I was like, all right, well, maybe somewhere in between. So I'll tell you that just personally right now, whether it's an info product, it's a physical product, whether it's a you know some kind of coaching, consulting, whatever it is, personally right now, um, I like to close cart about 48 hours from the time that I give them uh, the option to buy. Now that doesn't mean that I won't reopen the cart strategically and make the buying sequence longer. 
okay? But I will definitely close down a cart within 48 hours and I recommend you guys do that. And just off that right now, if you guys come tell me if it makes you more money, please let me know because I'm pretty sure it's going to, okay? Uh, just by you taking it off the shelf, everyone wants what they can't have and uh, usually you make more money. So what I thought would be cool right now is to share with you guys the, the three emails that I wrote um, to close the cart on the Offermind Masterclass that we just did. And that's what I have in my hand right now, okay? And the whole point of this is not for you to sit back and go, think about this one word that he used. Maybe that's why the sequence worked. You know, uh, I was speaking at an event and somebody walked up and they said, <clears throat> they said, Stephen, I thought it was amazing that you went and you did this one, this one sentence inside this little thing and then you switched the color from this to this and then I was like, oh, that's so brilliant. Basically, they were trying to find connections of things that were not connections, okay? Don't do that with what I'm about to read here. What I want you to understand, okay? What I want you to understand, I'll just tell you right now, please understand that having a closed cart sequence is worth way more than you obsessing and trying to follow some formula that is way too deep dive, that is so obscure, finding, reaching for connections for things that really aren't connections. Don't do that when you follow somebody, okay? Just follow the major core framework and then if there's a strong pattern, cool, then you can add it to the framework, okay? So there's a little caveat, because I've noticed some people are starting to do that. They're like, man, Steven, you did X, Y, and Z, that was incredible. And I was like, man, I was just, in fact, I did that actually a little while ago. I did a video. Um, um, I did a video for ClickFunnels for, uh, <clears throat> I hijacked Russell's phone. And really, I just recorded a video on my phone and I sent it to the ClickFunnels team and then they put it from his account, okay? But I was like, I'm hijacking Russell's account. And there were tons of people legitimately concerned that I'd actually done that. I'm like, come on. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but that video was very effective. And a lot of people, it sold a lot and it was awesome. And I was just following some formats and frameworks in my head. And at the end of that, like there wasn't a lot of planning. At the end of that, I had some people reach back out and say, Steven, that was amazing. That was so crazy. I, you were doing this and you must have spent time doing putting these pieces together. And I like the flow of the, of the content this way. And I was like, they, they're like, I, <laughs> someone was like, I downloaded it and I've already transcribed it. And I was like, guys, I, I was riffing. <laughs> I was just making it up. I was just pulling my phone. Like there is a sense of being prepared, but there's also something that's just getting it done. Right, and so I took my phone, anyway, I'm telling you that because as I read this, I don't want you to sit back and say, this is the most powerful framework and this is law. No, 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 this is art, okay? This is not science. My group is the science of selling online and I want you to follow me for the science of it. Sometimes though, I like to play in the art of it, the stuff that's really hard to measure, okay? So this is more of art and I'm just telling you that anyway. Okay, <clears throat> so check this out, okay? So this is how the email starts. And it said, now, now think about it with me. Now think about a product that you're selling or you want to sell. And you go and you, you, you present the offer to somebody, right? Now this is the first email that I dropped out after having presented an offer. I'm not saying it's the end all be all. And I'm not saying it's the one I use for webinars. That, that's actually a different sequence. It's very different, okay? But this is the cart close that I would typically use on anything I'm promoting, whether it's my product, an affiliate product, and it's online or offline, this is usually the sequence that I follow, okay? So I know I'm going like seven minutes here now, but like I just want you to know, like with these backdrops, this is where I use what I'm about to share with you right now, okay? So this is the first email. And I said, opportunities don't leave you if you don't act, they just go to somebody else. That was a rather powerful quote I heard, and I believe from an event that I was attending about eight years ago. The topic was stocks and options and it was from the Rich Dad Company. My dad and I were attending together. He and I both looked at each other when, uh, and came up with a plan on how we could pay for the $30,000 course that they were selling right there. It's a true story. It's one of, the re one of the first reasons I started doing this business at all, I, by going into debt, okay? And uh, stupidly, okay, I, I, anyway. <clears throat> Uh, I'm glad I did that, but you understand, like, it was not easy for me to measure the return. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, if I do this, I'll put up half the cost, and then you pay ha your half back from the money you make from it. Sounds good? That's what my dad actually said to me, and that was our actual deal, was that I would um, pay him back the grant, uh, pay him back 15 grand uh, from the money from the course. <clears throat> we signed a promissory note and everything, and we made the jump and went after it. I set up a computer next to him in his office, and we started paper trading, meeting with fake money, like animals, okay, and learning all about financial markets. And you know what? I never made cash from that with the course. Gulp. 
or have I? Okay. But that was the trigger that started a series of events in my life that gave me a, a sense of uh, self-confidence around taking opportunities. If I had not made that jump, I would not have gone on to doing real estate like I did. If I had not made that jump, um, I would have not started learning how to post real estate listings and actually get my first taste of the internet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, you understand like where I'm going with this? My past failures set up my future success. And under that premise, there was very little, there's very little real failure, okay? There's only momentum. There's only progression. There's only action. I feel myself losing speed, or sorry, if I feel myself losing speed, it's usually because I started to play small out of fear, right? That said, opportunity is all around us, but there's a time limit on it. That saying that opportunity doesn't come around too often is plain stupid. Okay, they come frequently, we just don't take them that often. Okay, where do they go? They go to somebody else, right? Hey, I've struck an opportunity with those of you guys who've been on the fence for the offer mine, the actual event, okay? And then what I do is I start transitioning into the offer. Now, wait, what do you notice from that email as I kind of read that to you? And that might be weird for me to read you something like this, but I'm telling a pretty gripping story. And why am I telling the story that I am? What false beliefs do you think I'm trying to help people overcome about buying my product when they hear the story, right? It's just as I opened up, opportunities don't leave if you don't act on them, they just go to somebody else. That was a quote I heard from that first event that I did with my dad, okay? And then what did I do? Is I start talking about money and how afraid I was. Then I start talking about how honestly, I didn't make any money from that, but everything else positive that's happened in my life has come because of that very freaky big jump I made. There was 15 grand that was way more money than I ever had in my bank account at that time, okay? So when somebody is sitting there and they're listening to it, and what's the point? What do you think's happening in their brain? Oh my gosh, opportunities, it's not like they just go on pause, they actually go to another person, which is true. They go to somebody else if you don't take action. What do you think that starts doing to their psyche about moving forward? They're like, oh my gosh, I have to have this, I need this, right? So this is like the first email, and then what I do is I tell the story, and then I go I transition into the offer. So I'm pitching them in the email on what I'm trying to get them to buy, okay? So I tell them, hey, I've struck an opportunity here with you, right? If you've been on the fence for OfferMind, if you guys go get the OfferMind Masterclass before tonight, before today, right, just a few hours from now, I'll actually give you guys a free ticket to OfferMind, plus all this other stuff that I was giving them at the time, okay? And that way you guys can create momentum in your life. The funny thing about momentum is it's one of the easiest things to create, but it can seem like the scariest thing in your entire life before you start moving. So set the wheels in motion for your benefit, no matter your current situation. All right, click below to go get it. You see what I'm doing there? Most of the time what I found is that, guys, and I want you to know, like this is out of true love. Thanks for being on Sales Funnel Radio. Really appreciate that. But just understand that one of the reasons why I'm sending this out is that, and I'm doing this, this podcast episode, is that if you actually look at, at now, those of you guys who are not on YouTube, it's not that you have to, but if you look at here on this page, right? I printed two pages for the sheet here. <clears throat> Three-fourths of this email is a story. The offer is only the last, like, fourth. And there's a powerful principle to that, right? And that's why I do it the way I do. Too many times in these emails where you're closing out the cart, it, I'm not saying it doesn't work to just present the offer and remind them of it, but I'll tell you that half the time, People need to get back in the same state that they were in when they were experiencing your sales pitch. So I don't wanna do it with the same pitch. So what I need to do is start a new story and then go in and drop my offer at the end, okay? That's a method. I'm not saying it's law, it's a method. It's one of my favorite methods to do though, okay? So that was the first email. It was all about opportunities leaving, okay? And then I dropped in an actual, um, and I'll just show you right here for those of you guys on YouTube checking this out. I dropped in an actual screenshot of my offer right here um, in the email. I'm like, hey, here's the offer. Come check it out. All right. And I'm, I'm recapping the offer. So when they click, my verbiage is go buy this now. Okay. <clears throat> it's not go get sold later. I'm selling them on the email. It's go click to go buy. And that worked very, very well. Um, we, that whole campaign that we did, like all together, it was probably, it was, I can't remember the exact, exact numbers. 45-ish grand, something like that. Um, not bad for a rerun, right? I actually learned a lot from that. Anyway, so then the next day, the next day, okay, that's day number one. The next day is this. This is how I started it. Private Larson, what is that and where did you get it? 
I had completed basic training and was now an AIT, Advanced Individual Training, and I was becoming an 89 Bravo, which means you're an ammunition specialist. Basically, we studied all kinds of ammo the Army had, except nuclear. Um, it's a true story and how I learned a lot more about finance strategy. Okay. Now, I didn't know when I entered it, but we basically were just glorified warehouse dudes. Okay. And I was really bored. To be clear, I loved the Army and what it taught me about myself, but there were moments of just complete dull grinding you know, crap. Hey, that's like anything, including funnels, right? Well, I got bored from learning paperwork. So one day at the PX, which is like a grocery store or a convenience store on, a, on, on like a base, um, I bought a book on finance and I snuck it back into our barracks. We were still fresh out of basic and personal items like that weren't really allowed yet. In between training sessions, I'd pop open my book, read financial strategies, uh, and figure out how I could use my military pay to use them, okay? I took my, uh, it took my mind back to a creative zone and I felt my mind open again. Yeah. And in parentheses, I said, the most grueling parts of basic and the armor are actually my favorite. And in hindsight, I wish I'd chosen something much, much, much harder. I just didn't know. I didn't know what I was choosing when I signed up. Okay. And I didn't know how much I'm built for momentum, aggression, and grit at that time either. But hey, at least I learned it young. Anyway, I said, well, you can see where this is going. I got caught that I had the book and I got punished. I got punished for reading finance books, okay? And honestly, I get it. It's a group largely made up of teens that you're gonna give weapons to who represent a country, okay? You're gonna want them pretty locked up. Now, I can't recall a single strategy that I actually learned from that finance book, but one of the biggest lessons I learned from it overall was that, that there are options in general, okay? This is, anyway, just knowing that there are things I can do with my money became very liberating. So while the army was teaching me how to be, how how I could be moldable and how moldable my life really is if I'm willing to feel a little bit of discomfort, my money is actually the same. I wanna teach you how to mold marketing for your sake. And right now I have a little deal going on for you. If you get offered my masterclass before midnight tonight, I'll give you this ticket. And this, okay, you see, it's the same thing as the last one. Like it's literally three fourths of this email is story. And then the last little bit is a recap of the offer, what you're gonna get and click here to buy now before midnight because we're taking away bonuses one day at a time right now. We didn't, we didn't take anything in the core offer. We took away bonuses day by day, which is really powerful <clears throat> and it worked really well. You see what I'm doing in that though? It's just a different hook. I know a lot of guys who did some kind of military or prior service experience follow me. And when I say that, what does it do? It creates a bond. I resonate, right? We resonate together. And I, I'm sharing more of myself and things that I've been through. And what's cool is then I just tie it into the offer. Because this skill is amazing. And it's one of the greatest skills of actual true marketing you could ever go develop in this stuff. Okay. Now, I want to give you one more uh, I want to give you one more little um, example, and it's a short email. Now, this is an email. This is what I sent on a day three. Um, this is an email that I sent out just to recap the offer. And I'll do these when I'm doing webinars. I'll do these a little bit more frequently, or I'll do these at different... Anyways, there's always a moment. I don't want to just make someone read a huge email to see the offer. If someone's like me, most of the time they just need to see a buy button and put the credit card in and I buy very easily, which is why I think I know how to sell stuff also. Become a good buyer. You usually learn how to sell stuff better when you just buy more stuff, okay? It's just true, like, anyway. <clears throat> okay, so if I have here in, um, uh, this is the third email, okay? And the third email, watch how fast I get to the offer. It's super fast, it's meant to be a reminder, hey, this is going away. All right, this is the third email though, okay? In exactly two months, we'll be setting up the room for OfferMind 2019, which is September 2nd and 3rd. I wanna give you one last shot at a free ticket when you buy OfferMind Masterclass by clicking right here. It says like the second sentence, right here, here you go. Last week, you had a chance to uh, get a fast glimpse of some of the OfferMind Masterclass. I wanna remind you that if you act before midnight tonight, what you're gonna get is bam, and I go straight through the offer, right? And it's total value of this, it's yours for just this amount, but I'm gonna be pulling this all, all this down um, by midnight tonight. Anyways, I said, well, uh, this means you gotta take action right now and I go straight into the offer, okay? <clears throat> now there's one piece I like to do in anything pr I'm promoting manually. If I'm auto promoting stuff, it's not something that I usually toss in in emails, but if I'm manually promoting something, this is definitely something I'll do frequently, which is like, check this out. Okay, what I like to do, and if you guys have been following me at all or you guys have followed any of my campaigns or anything that I go toss out, you, you've likely watched me do this, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay, this at the end of the email or social post or wherever it is that I'm doing my, you know, presenting my content, 
At the end of the email, I love, especially if it's like a real world, not an evergreen live manual campaign that I'm running. I love putting the list of those people who have purchased in the bottom of the email. And I will say, congrats to those of you who bought whatever. And I'll put this list all down below. I swear that has doubled my actual purchases in the past. Okay, all the, all, the, all the people that I've done with to do that with, that, that's a huge deal. So I'll go download the list of people who've either bought or have purchased something through an affiliate link and actually will just put their name, nothing else, in the email. You know what that does for social proof? That's so freaking powerful. It's so amazing, guys. And anyway, so that's that's it. I just, the only reason why I'm telling you guys this stuff is because I want you to know that, that everything should have a closed cart sequence. And yes, there are tons of strategies and webinar have webinar ones have, have something very specific and e-com ones can have some very, but having one in general, just have one and close the cart. Okay, I have some very good friends. I've got some close acquaintances who have made millions of dollars on cheap products merely because they strategically open and close their cart frequently. Okay, I'm gonna take it down. And then they go and they put it back up and then they take it down and then they go and they put it back up and they take it down. They go and put it back up and they'll do it two, three week rotations, right? Where it's not open for several weeks. And then the boom, they'll blast out an email and then it's like, Hey, it's open for a couple days. Bam. And then they close it down. Usually what I've found is that if your offer is good enough and you have been selling it and your sales message is good enough and people have been consuming it and going and buying and your funnel is good enough and you've been going like, most of the time when someone comes to me and they say, Steven, how do I go and I increase my sales? One of the easiest ways to do it is by introducing more scarcity and urgency rather than change something in the funnel or the sales message. Okay, and that's the whole point of this episode. And hopefully that's been helpful to you guys. Guys, if you did appreciate, if you guys did like this episode, please let me know. If you guys go to sjlreview.com, it will forge you to our review site. It actually really, I, I appreciate that a lot if you choose to do that. Um, sjlreview.com. Um, and then also Offermind. Guys, please come to Offermind. Offermind is not a funnel event. Um, it's about cash flow tactics. It's about cash flow models. And we're gonna go and we're gonna teach you guys several cash flow models uh, that you guys can use. Day number one, we're gonna go deep on a few things just with me personally. And then the second day I'm going in and I'm bringing in my coaches who I will now at the end of this year will have paid probably about a, almost 150 grand, okay? And you guys get to hear from my coaches for the price of an admission ticket, okay? Which is super powerful. And what I've asked them to come in and teach you is cash flow models in regard to what their expertise is. It's very powerful. Would love to have you guys come. Go to offermind.com and go ahead and get your ticket. Uh, VIP's almost sold out, actually. We're really excited. So, all right, guys, we'll see you guys later and see you guys who come to Offermind uh, in just a few months. Bye. Boom. If you're just starting out, you're probably studying a lot. That's good. You're probably geeking out on all the strategies also, right? That's also good. But the hardest part is figuring out what the market wants to buy and how you should sell it to them, right? That's also what I struggled with for a while until I learned the formula. So I created a special mastermind called an offer mind to get you on track with the right offer and more importantly, the right sales script to get it off the ground and sell it. Wanna come? There's small groups on purpose so I can answer your direct questions in person for two straight days. You can hold your spot by going to offermind.com. Again, that's offermind.com.